My friends, how is everybody today? I hope you had a great week. Welcome to the Guitar Q&A live stream. Uh, I do hope you had a good day, a good week. We got the sunshine uh, shining down on us here in small town, Connecticut. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, I think we're going to have a great show today. I have uh, a plan, and I'm also dying to get to your questions. And we got one right off, right off the bat. Oh, R says, what's the significance of the name Song Bike? It's a great question. Love songs, love bikes. There you go. I used to ride my little bicycle around town and deliver newspapers. I always had a little song humming in my head. And, uh, and there you go. The rest is history. That is the significance of Song Bike. I had to come up with some kind of name. Uh, for what I do, and uh, um, to be more musically specific, songs are what it's all about. I um, that's what motivates me to get better at my instrument. Um, and you might say, "Wait, everyone feels that way." I would disagree. Some people want to get good at their instrument just for the challenge of it, pure and simple, and that's a very cool thing. Um, I I like songs. I like the song, the art form of the song. Um, I was just listening to Crazy Mama by, who did Crazy Mama? Who wrote that? You guys know who did it. Crazy Mama, written by one of my favorite guitar players. Who did that? I'm putting it in the chat now. J.J. Kale. Why am I bringing up Crazy Mama by J.J. Kale? Uh, very short song. This song is so, it's almost not even there. It's short. There's so little going on. Uh, until you listen closely. What a great song. Um, fantastic guitar playing. But after the live stream, go and listen to J.J. Kale's Crazy Mama. And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about, where the song and the cool things that happen within the song are so awesome. Um, but there's no uh, intense, um, technically amazing guitar playing. Although there's amazing guitar playing because it's so tasteful and so good. Anyways songs uh time surfing alien hello val hello michael fisher from maine hello you know you guys you know i love it when uh, you identify where you're watching or listening from scott rhodes hello chris lloyd from sweet virginia <laughs> that would be awesome if that was the the name of your town i have a feeling that might not be the name of your town but let's go with it sweet virginia sounds good to me um so my friends uh I want to answer any and all of your questions, so keep them coming in. Don't forget to put a few question marks in advance of your questions. Uh, I also want to share a bunch of things with you. Uh, Joseph Glasser says, did you ever see the video where Frank Zappa used a bicycle as a musical instrument? I believe I have seen that video. He's a very young guy, right? I believe he's clean shaven, and he's on, I want to say he's on one of those... Uh, shows it's a little bit a little bit before my time I, like the jack benny show something like that um and it's a clip from from that and i have seen that yeah scott rhodes says sweet virginia has to be a song scott it is the rolling stones have that song sweet virginia right uh puba john from my neck of the woods here in connecticut joseph says yeah that was from a talk show um uh charlie beagle checking in from lost river west virginia are uh, the best names and of course Christian Jorgensen joining us from Norway. Christian from Norway. Uh, yeah, Charlie Beagle, you got it. You got it. Um, in fact, uh, Sweet Virginia is a great song. Uh, that would be a great song for us to do as, as a song of the week someday. Um, got a little profanity in there, which is great. Um, but I don't know. I try to keep things PG-13 here in... Uh, here on the live stream. So my friends, let me tell you what I got for you today because I got stuff. Um, I have a dumb question that I'll be posting it uh, and, and throwing you away soon. Uh, I have the top 10 things, the top 10 things a guitar teacher hears. Um, and if you've ever taken lessons, it's extremely likely you've said one of these 10 things to your guitar teacher, the top 10 things a guitar teacher hears. I have a book of the week to share with you, not a book that I wrote, although I'd be happy to talk about those two. But, you know, I like to um, show you guys the books that I learned from and the books that I use in my teaching. I grabbed this particular book a couple of days ago and uh, for a lesson, and I thought to myself, you know what, that should be book of the week. week. Uh, I'm always looking for your requests for chord melody songs. I did three 
new chord melodies this week. And actually two of them, two of the three were based on your requests. True story. Um, you guys remember, I'm working on a book of chord melody arrangements of a lot of tunes. And at this point, I'm up into the 20 something, probably about 24, 25 tunes. I'm going to end up with probably about 30. So uh, in case you're curious, um, the chord melody arrangements that I did this week include uh, a Shenandoah by request and uh, The Water is Wide by request. And I also did uh, Make You Feel My Love, the Bob Dylan song that most people heard for the first time being sung by Adele. But Make You Feel My Love has been covered by Billy Joel, uh, Garth Brooks, and a million other people. Um, so I did a chord melody arrangement of Make You Feel My Love by Bob Dylan, and it came out great. Uh, I would love your input. So um, even if you've already thought of a tune, post another one in the, in the uh, chat today. I'm looking for tunes that are famous, slow, and have relatively easy chords. If you're not sure about the chords, post it anyways, you know, but slow and famous, those two work. Um, and your request might just end up in the book. Um, so that's what's going on there. We, of course, have a play along. We might even do two play alongs tonight. We might, because tomorrow is, what's tomorrow? Sunday. But beyond being Sunday, tomorrow, March 17th is, is what? St. Patrick's Day. So we have uh, a couple of tunes uh, tonight that hope we, hopefully we can get to both of them for St. Patrick's Day. Um, oh, I always love to uh, throw a little local flavor your way. You guys are from Fort Collins, Colorado, like Randy. Um, Deborah Cohn is from Tom Petty's hometown, which is Gainesville, Georgia. Is that right, Deborah? Gainesville, Georgia. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry, Gainesville, Florida. Um, <laughs> Winston. Winston from North Wales. Oh, Winston. You know, be oh, uh, <laughs> your the name of your town, Winston. I'm not going to go there because even if I tried, I I've been fooled by before by you know names by, by words in Welsh. So I'm not going to try. But Winston joining us for the first time from North Wales, love it, love it. That's awesome. <clears throat> um, Chris from Central New Jersey in a New Jersey state of mind, love it. San Jose, California. Okay, you guys are checking in. My fantasy would be a big map behind me. And uh, the map is like lighting up, you know, as people from around the globe, um, you know, check in, right? Robert, little town north of Ontario. Love it. Love it. Um, YouTube uh, makes it, makes information available to me, such as uh, the general demographics of who watches my YouTube videos and, and who's, you know, who's, who's out there. And, um, and not surprisingly, we've got a bunch of people that are uh, in the U.S. right now, a bunch of you. But yeah, Canada and um, different English-speaking places around the world. Uh, so let's go back to your questions. Music fan <laughs> knows where I can find them. That's right. Music fan and beginner guitar lessons are moderators. And you know what I like to do for our moderators? I like to throw them some wild applause like this. How about that right there? Let's hear for our moderators. That's, there you go. That's why their names are blue and they have that little wrench next to their name. They're going to keep us all on the same, uh, on the same line. Beginner Guitar Lessons, um, by the way, is suggesting a chord melody arrangement of Turn the Page. Ooh, that could be very cool. Is it a slow song? Yep. Famous song, definitely. Easy chords. Ooh. All right, man. That could be very cool. My wheels are turning. Uh, Matt from Los Angeles checking in. Okay, let's get to um, Doug's question. Um, Doug says, uh, there's only so much time for guitar practice. It seems we can work on techniques and theory and not learn songs. Would you recommend learning songs as a focus? Yes, although some people are the exact opposite. Some people say they learn you know, song, song, song. That's their focus. And they readily admit they know nothing about music theory. And they don't do technical stuff like scales, arpeggios, or picking exercises. So um, my uh, the answer, using songs as a focus, is a great idea. In a perfect world, you would have both. You would um, say, uh, learn, some, learn some music theory about um, what it means when someone says, uh, this song is a one, four, five. And as you learn the music theory behind those nicknames, a one chord, a four chord, and a five chord, 
you also are learning to play some of your favorite songs that happen to be one, four, five songs. In fact, we have some one, four, fives. Our, our uh, play alongs tonight are going to be one, four, five songs. So in a perfect world, everything is integrated because it actually, it is integrated. Um, meaning every song has music theory behind it. Every song involves some sort of technical skill, right? But that doesn't mean we always approach it that way. So, um, in Doug, I do recommend learning songs as a focus, but you know, you got to choose wisely. Well, you don't, you play any song you want. You don't have to choose wisely, have fun with it. But um, certain songs will confirm your skills, and that's a good thing, right? Say you're great at D, G, and A, um, and you're doing, you know, a certain strum pattern that you're good at, uh, and you learn a few more songs that are D, G, and A with that strum pattern. Awesome. Um, that's a, that's a, that's confirming your skills, which is great. You know, um, you put in all that work to one on one tune. It'd be nice to learn ten more tunes that are essentially the same. Uh, but then there are songs that push us, that force you to do that bar chord or that B seven chord or B minor chord, um, and you want to have some of those too, right? <clears throat> uh, in general, I'm going to encourage you to trust your instinct. If you're grinding away at a song but you're making progress and you're having fun, awesome. If you're not really making progress and you're definitely not having fun, move on to another song. Rumor has it, rumor has it, there's a million songs in the world. I can't confirm, but I, my sense, yeah, is that there's a million songs in the world. So move on, you know? Um, that's why it's good to work with a specific teacher, you know, sitting there in the same room or an online teacher, and you can say, here's the kind of music I like. Here's what I'd like to be able to do. Um, here's the skills that I do have, or maybe you have zero skills because you're just starting out, and they can match up the technical stuff that you need, um, that we all need, with the specific songs you want to play, and it's all integrated. That's to me, that's a good guitar teacher. You know, they listen, they take what you're saying, and they put it all together. Marianne is joining us. Hey, Marianne, I, I like to grab us. I like to say hello to you guys. Um, Tom from Sutter Creek, California. Uh, William, thanks for being here. Uh, Alan from Warsaw in the UK. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, so you guys, this is awesome. 50 people, hold on, 48 people. We just started. We just started, man. That's awesome. Um, okay. So, uh, let's, um, let's get right to, uh, Jim from Bloomingdale, Illinois. Um, let's, I'm feeling crazy. Let's get right to a guitar play along. Let's just do it because I have two songs. So get your guitars. I'll give you a minute to get your guitars. Okay. Get your guitars. Uh, you do not need a capo. You do need your uh, D, G, and A chords. Okay. D, G, and A chords. And we'll start in a minute. Um, while you get, are getting your guitars ready, get them tuned up. Um, uh, let's talk about the music theory behind, the, you know, we have a chord family of the night, um, as Stephen Mannion suggested way back in the day. The chord family of the night is D, G, and A. So let's talk a little bit about that as a chord family. And then and then we will uh, get into the song that uses D, G, and A. So let's plan on doing two play-alongs uh, tonight. Both of them are going to be Irish tunes uh, and then both are going to have a lot in common. For instance, they're both going to use D, G, and A. Um, okay, so why are D, G, and A, uh, why do they sound good together? Why do they show up so much together? And why are they known as a one, four, five combination? Okay, it all starts, it all starts with a major scale. Every time, every conversation about music theory, it all goes back to major scales. Uh, if you're stuck on, you know, if you're traveling for business, and you want to do something on the plane and in the airport, learn everything you can about a major scale in general and then about the major scales that are out there. Okay. <clears throat> We're about to play a song in a moment in the key of D. Not surprisingly, the D chord is at the heart of the song and it's nicknamed the one chord. We're in the key of D. D is known as the one chord. This the melody of the song that I'm going to sing is... The melody is made up of notes from the D major scale. 
to the best of my ability, I'm not going to sing a single note that's not in the D major scale. <laughs> you know, if I do, guess what? I'll be singing off key, right? You know, we don't want that because um, we're in the key of D. Okay, the D major scale contains seven notes. They happen to be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. And then the eighth note, you're back to D again. Those notes can be combined into many chords, but the three we're gonna focus on is the D major chord, which contains a D, F sharp, and A. The G major chord, which contains G, B, and D. Those are three notes in the D major scale, G, B, and D. And the A chord, which contains A, C sharp, and E, also three notes from the major scale. So do you get how with the major scale as our starting point, I'm grabbing individual notes from the major scale and combining them into chords, right? Scales come first, from scales we get chords. This is not a chicken and the egg kind of uh, phenomenon. Scales come first, from scales we extract chords, groups of notes, right? That's what a chord is, a group of a note, group of notes. Even if I arpeggiate a chord, I'm still playing a D chord. I'm just, I'm just playing the notes individually. But your ear reassembles all of that and recognizes it's a D major chord. Okay. Uh, the melody, like I said, is also based on the major scale. In this case, the melody is based on the D major scale. Every note that the composer wrote when they composed this song is a note from the D major scale. But thankfully, they didn't write a melody in this order. This sounds like a major scale. Nothing wrong with that. But it's not, um, it's not uh, as interesting as all the millions of other possibilities you can come up with when you shake up the major scale, right? And shake up the notes. Okay, so uh, our chord family of the night is D, G, and A. The D, not, we're in the key of D. Not surprisingly, the D chord is is uh, the nicknamed the one chord. G is nicknamed the four chord. Why? Because the note G is the fourth note of a, G, of a D major scale. I'll say that again. The G note is the fourth note of a D major scale. So we nickname G the four chord in this context. And we nickname A the five chord in this context because the note A is the fifth note of a D major scale. These are just nicknames. One, four, and five. And uh, long story short, the one, four, and five chords in any key give us just enough tension and resolution. They keep things just interesting enough that we can get a nice, satisfying song out of those three chords. Um, so there's an awful lot of songs, especially folk songs, because, hey, how does a folk song survive hundreds or thousands of years? I don't know. Let's go with hundreds of years. Hundreds of years of uh, history getting passed down from generation to generation. It helps if the song is only three chords and the melody is relatively simple easy to pass on um, just from one generation, sing it to the next. Okay, so what are we doing here? Our first play along of the night, Mari's Wedding. I know some of you are saying, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. You, some of you know this song, Mari's Wedding, right? Um, in honor of St. Patrick's Day. How about that? There we go. Uh, and if you don't know this song, you're about to learn it, but some of you know this song, especially those of you from across the pond. Uh, there's the whole tune. You can see why I chose it. D for four strums, G for two, A for two. So at first, I'm going to keep it simple, just four, G, uh, four Ds, two Gs, and two As. And just keep looping that around. As, as we get into the tune, I'm going to treat each of these letters, instead of indicating a single strum on D, that's going to be a boom chick sound on D where I hit the open D string, the fourth string, by itself, nice downstroke. And then I strum the treble strings. So instead of just strumming D four kind of broad strums, I'm going to do four boom chicks like this. When you get to the G, later on in the tune, instead of just strumming two Gs like this, I'm going to go boom chick, boom chick. I'm hitting the sixth string and then answering back on the three treble strings. And lastly, on the A chords, later on the tune, instead of just strumming two A's, nothing wrong with that, you're welcome to keep doing that, but I'm gonna change over to boom, chick, boom, chick, on the A chord. 
Okay, so in slow motion, we're going to start in a minute. Get ready. In slow motion, I'm going to go like this, starting on the D. Four times G, A. Okay, you got it. All right, but I'll start off just doing the simple downstroke strums. Mari's Wedding. Step we gaily on we go, heel for heel and toe for toe. <clears throat> In case you are looking for the melody of this tune, grab your D chord. The melody, it's always good to know how the melody begins, right? Especially if you're the one who's going to be singing the tune a week from now, right? Anyone who grabs a D chord, the melody is waiting for you right there. Uh, the first lyric is, step we gaily on we go. Okay, check it out. The step we gay. That's uh, third string, G string, second fret. Step we gay, Leon. The Leon, that's what you do in the ring finger. That's the melody note there, second string, third fret. And then we go, that's the middle finger note, first string, second fret. Step we gay, Leon, we go. Hey, the whole melody, the first handful of notes of the melody are right there. Literally, they are part of the D chord. Okay, so let's see the best way to do this. You ready to go? Okay, you know, I always want to give you guys a chance to see what my hands are doing. Someday I'll work this out just right. Of course, I don't want you to lose track of the chords. Um, of course, memorizing of all the songs out there in the world, relatively easy song to memorize, right? Four beats of a D, two beats of G, two beats of A. You know, what if I have an idea? I'm going to crank this up high. Oh, look at that. Are we still in the shot? Yeah, we're in the shot, man. We got that. I'm going to take this away. I know they're going to fall over anyways. Okay, now we're cooking. <laughs> <clears throat> la la la. Okay. How about if I go through it one time and then I start singing the second time around? You ready? Four D's, two G's, two A's. Two, three, four. Here we go. Step with gaily on we go. Heel for heel and toe for toe. Arm and arm and row and row, all for Mari's wedding. Over hills and up and down, Myrtle Green and back and round, past she links through the town, all for the sake of Mari. Step gaily on we go, heel for heel, toe for toe, arm and arm and row on row, all for Mari's wedding. Redder cheeks as Rowan's are, brighter eyes as any star. Fairest of them all by far is our darling Mari. Step gaily on we go, heel for heel and toe for toe. Arm and arm and row on row, and all for Mari's wedding. Plenty hair and plenty meal, plenty feet to fill the reel. Plenty body parents as well, that's the toast for Mari. Step gaily on we go, heel for heel and toe for toe. Arm in arm and row on row, all for Mari's wedding. All right, how'd you do? Pretty straightforward, right? So you notice that I did the simple strums, right? Then I changed over to the boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick. I went back to the simple strums just to remind you that as far as your fretting hand is concerned, the timing never changed. How I picked it changed, but it's still four counts on D, two counts on G, two counts on A. See how that that just kept, that, that was consistent, right? Um, so I just want to... Uh, Keep it real. Keep it real. Those nice uh, with, with the with the to point out that the e even if you're not capable of doing all that boom chick stuff at the moment, that's okay. You can still do 
through this stuff. So, of course, my hope for you guys is that uh, if that, for instance, that more advanced boom chick, boom chick thing, if that just was not going to happen today, or if you could kind of do it, but not as fast, no problem. But then you come back to this video, right? Uh, when I timestamp this video, I will, I will tab that out in the description of this, uh, this live stream, okay? I'll tab this out four times on D. two times on G, and two times on A. Okay? All right. I bet you sounded great. Uh, Mari's Wedding. Now, full disclosure, I did a little research about this tune, and uh, I understand that the roots of this tune are Scottish, and St. Patrick's Day tomorrow is an Irish holiday. I know, I know. A lot of Irish singers have done versions of this, so that's so I need a little slack <laughs> for those of you who are uh, keeping score. Um, I do have an Irish tune coming up a little bit later, okay? All right, Mari's Wedding. I love that song. One of my favorite albums of all time is good old Van Morrison, Irish Heartbeat. I'm putting it in the chat. Why not? Irish Heartbeat by Van Morrison and who? The Chieftains. Because the Chieftains are awesome. Although uh, I feel like most musicians on the planet have uh, sooner or later done a, a song or an album with the Chieftains. I remember at one point someone said, why did the chicken get, cross the road <laughs> to get away from doing an album with the Chieftains? I don't know. Was that funny enough to warrant this? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Anyways, I love that album so much, uh, Irish Heartbeat, um, where they did Mari's Wedding. And ooh, tech, uh, they did the, the next song we're going to do a little bit later in, in today's show was also from that album. Okay, so uh, Doug, is, you're suggesting um, for the chord melodies, you're suggesting Wichita Lineman. That's on my list to check out. I, 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 someone suggested... Um, Someone suggested uh, Galveston by Glenn Campbell. Maybe it was you, Doug. I'm not sure. And I couldn't, I couldn't come up with a simple version. Um, I, I, I like to keep these chord melody arrangements as simple as possible. Um, and I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it with Galveston. But w Wichita Lineman is on my list. Uh, let's see. Uh, Stephen Mannion. Um, a lot of people have have covered Mari's Wedding. Like I said, Van Morrison was the first time I ever heard it. But yeah, t t tons of uh, tr traditional Irish groups. Um, okay. Da -da -da. I want to make sure I don't miss any questions and don't miss any uh, any hellos out there. Try to say hello to you folks as you join our uh, our group here. Um, now, don't forget to uh, get your questions in. I'm here for you. You guys actually are the show, technically. You guys are the show. Okay, let's try this again. You might say, why do I prioritize putting anything quite up there? Because this particular camera uh, adjusts. <laughs> if I take the white away, I look like that. I don't know. I'd rather look like this. Uh, I see in the monitor that I'm wearing a shirt, and which is about how it should be. But the shirt tonight, the shirt under the shirt, is the Music Emporium, Lexington, Massachusetts. Actually, they have two... Uh, they have two locations, two uh, guitar stores in the Boston area. And I went to one of the locations uh, a few months back. What a cool place, the Music Emporium. I love it. Uh, time for the dumb question of the night. I want to throw a dumb question out there. I, for, I like doing this for lots of reasons. Um, one of which is I know that some of you out there were that you might ask a dumb question. And I'm gonna, I like beating you to the punch. Uh, so uh, that's one reason I like to ask a dumb question. Another reason I like to come up with these during the week as I'm getting ready for shows, live streams, is uh, the, the, I try to come up with a question that's kind of a dumb question, but also it, it, it does kind of make you think. All right, ready for tonight's dumb question? It's not really a dumb question, but... Okay, how do people play the guitar without looking. 
How? I mean, how is that even a thing? How do you play the guitar without looking? I do it. I bet you have done it. Maybe you do it all the time, but I bet you have done it at certain points, depending on what you've done. And of course, the the history of the guitar is is full of fantastic legendary players who are blind. You know, they do it. How do people do it? How do you play the guitar without looking? I don't know. You know, practice, practice, practice. That's part of it. You know, it's part of it. If if you're like me and a lot of my students, um, you you find yourself playing the guitar um, with your eyes focused on one hand, and you might lose track of the fact that you're the other hand. You're not looking at it, and then then you think about it and you mess up, right? But um, yeah, I know you guys are talking about muscle memory. Um, I'm a I'm a big fan of muscle memory, uh, and yet, geez, how do you how do you explain that? You know, in in I mean, I, I believe I know what muscle memory is, <clears throat> but uh, well, I know I know what I want to believe it is. I have no idea what's going on in my little brain. I just call it muscle memory, right? Um, but to play the guitar without looking, you know, what if someone never? You know, never had I say to begin with. I don't know. It's a dumb question. I know, but I want to point out that how do you do it? Playing without looking. Yeah, Chris Lord is making a good point. Once you stand up with your guitar, uh, you know, presumably with a strap on, then everything your whole change your whole reference, right? And then pretty quickly, <laughs> you 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 have to. I don't know. You, you can still crane your neck and look at stuff, but um, it it. Yeah, it definitely changes your perspective. Um, so something to think about, you know, is it is it just oh you play a lot? Yeah, but you're doing you're doing all this these fine motor skills without even looking. And and as you get better and better, you can do some some pretty sophisticated stuff. I've surprised myself, not on a daily basis, but there are definitely times where I think, oh man, how did I just jump up from from two to nine without looking? You know, I mean, and nine was my goal, you know, and like, wait, how did I just do that? You know, trust me, it doesn't happen often enough. Um, but what is going on in our little brains to make that happen? You know, hmm. practicing the dark. Martian Murray says practicing the dark can help. Yeah, cool idea. Cool idea. Practicing in the dark. I don't know. Why not? Yep. Puba John had a guitar accident. Uh Oh, your guitar got broken, but it got glued back. Your 25-year-old guitar, ooh, ouch, dropped it. The neck broke near the nut. Yeah, such a vulnerable, the headstock, right? Such a vulnerable area right there. Yeah, got it glued back. Everything's fixable. Everything's fixable. And sometimes it's more expensive than you'd hope, but everything is fixable. Um, I, I've, heard, I've heard repair people, guitar techs and luthiers, when they finish a significant repair, they, they say the repair is so strong and so well done that that's the one place the guitar will never break again. <laughs> so look on the bright side. I mean, that's that could be the case that you now have an extremely strong guitar at that very vulnerable point, you know. Uh, Rhinestone Cowboy, Joseph Galasso, Rhinestone Cowboy, one of my favorite tunes of all time. I, my mom and dad brought home that uh Glenn Campbell album, the one with the um, textured cover. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The Glenn Campbell Rhinestone Cowboy album from the mid 70s. And it wasn't just a typical flat cardboard cover. It had some texture to it. You know, Glenn Campbell on a horse. You could you could feel his like cool jacket and feel the cactus. I can picture this like it was yesterday. I still have that album somewhere. Rhinestone Cowboy. What a cool song. Uh, so here are some other things that I want to uh, throw your way, my friends. Um, when I timestamp uh, these live streams um, in, the, in the day or two following uh, this live stream, I have to sit through all the same ads that you do. Um, and I'm aware that YouTube loads up the early part of the live stream with ads. And the ads in general are less frequent um, in the later half of the live stream. So if you guys can ha hang in there, you can hang in there. I know the ads are going to start popping up if they haven't already. Um, I know they 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 throw a lot at you. Hang in there, um, and uh, and it gets better as the show goes on a little bit, 
a little bit. At least that's that's how I understand it. You know, that's how I understand it. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's talk about our book of the week. Why not? Well, I have forty-eight of you. Beautiful, forty-eight of you. Book of the week from one of my favorites, Dave Rubin. And the book is called 12 Bar Blues, The Complete Guide for Guitar, CD Included. I wouldn't be surprised nowadays if uh, instead of um, a CD, you simply get a code. And the code allows you to access the, uh, the How Leonard website. And, um, and then you, you hear all the stuff online, you know. Uh, so why did I pick this book? Well, number one, Anything by Dave Rubin. And I, I know that not all of you learn out of books. I get that. That's that's okay. But anything by Dave Rubin is worth it. Um, and it's full of tab. Just so you know, for those of you who are not comfortable learning out of books, you know, tab, I, I, I would bet the majority of you are, are okay reading tab and, and working with um, with uh, chord diagrams. I don't know if this has any chord diagrams. Um, but don't, don't be, uh, as long as you can read tab, don't be totally you know, concerned that a book that you won't get anything out of a book like this. You drop your 16 or 20 bucks and say, oh, that, why would I waste my money? I don't learn out of books because tab is tab, right? Um, and you might say, yeah, but I, I won't know the timing of it, but that's where the audio comes in. In fact, even if you think you do know the timing of stuff, you always want to listen to the audio, you know, to, to pick up any little nuances of, of what's going on. So the point of this particular book by Dave Rubin, he's written a lot of them. Um, all, no, I don't, I shouldn't say all, many very cool approaches to playing rhythm guitar um, in the context of a 12-bar blues format. And if you're not sure what 12-bar blues means, it's the format of the vast majority of blues music you've heard. And because blues music is sort of the influential music in, in American popular culture, for sure, if not globally, um, the 12-bar blues format is copied and pasted and reused for lots of other kinds of music, country, jazz, rock and roll, anything that blues music touches. Okay, so for example, um, I want to throw this one your way because you guys can do this in two seconds. Uh, we're in the world of rhythm guitar, which means it's repetitive, it's consistent, it's steady, uh, um, doesn't mean it has to be boring, right? So I'm going to stop talking for a minute and play, and then I'll, we'll regroup about what this is. This is from Dave Rubin's book, page 33. A one, two, three. <laughs> Okay, repetitive, insistent, steady, right? No chords. Rhythm guitar doesn't have to involve chords. What I was doing there reflected the notes in general of a G7 chord, not necessarily G7 the way we all strum it, you know, that G7. But remember, all, all the word chord means is a, is a collection of notes. Um, and what you do with those notes is up to you. So, okay, so... This is from a, a chapter of the book called Riff Blues, because it's a riff that you repeat over again with variations. There's going to be some variations as you go through the page. But that's the, the um, rhythm guitar heart of the song, as opposed to strumming chords or whatever else you might associate with rhythm guitar. I chose this one. <laughs> because it's kind of straightforward and easy. I mean, it's one note at a time, right? Um, I don't know if he mentions this, but I'll tell you right now that I was fretting, you might have noticed I was fretting the sixth string with my thumb. My left hand thumb is just reaching over and grabbing that, because why not? It frees up my index and ring to do all those fives and threes. I will tab out this, this riff um, in the description of this video. I'm not going to tab out the whole page because, hey, man, you got to get the book, man. Dave Rubin taught me to teach you out of respect for the man. I'm going to I'm only going to tab out that riff and you can get the whole rest of it from the book. Knock on wood. The book is still in print. I Let's check right now. I mean, why wouldn't it be right? Such a cool book. 12 Bar Blues by Dave 
Rubin from Hal Leonard Publications. Okay. And boy, is it in print. It's up to $19.99 now. Um, you can get it from Amazon, but you know, you can get it from lots of other places too. You can get it, I think you can get it from Hal Leonard directly. Okay. So yeah, I I uh I don't hate me, okay? I got it for four bucks. I went to my favorite used bookstore and uh they had a whole bunch of guitar books just to happen to have them there. So yeah, I got it for four bucks. Sorry. Um whoever had it before me paid $16.95 and now it's up to 19 bucks. What a cool book, man. Um, there's stuff in here that's a lot more advanced than that. A lot trickier chord stuff. That's all right. But I want to throw that one out at you. <clears throat> um, LR is pointing out that Dave Rubin has um, a book called Beginning Blues Guitar. Oh, yeah, he has a bunch. He has a bunch. You can't go wrong. Anything you see by Dave Rubin, I believe the majority of it is going to be blues. Um, but anything by him, I, I recommend. And if, it's, if you find something by him that's not blues... Um, get that too, man, anything. And I'll say it one more time. Don't think to yourself, I can't read music. Why would I buy a book? As long as you can read tab, everything in this book is written out in tab. Um, and the audio will help you with the timing. You know, you're all set. I'm set. Um, I, in my, in my, um, guitar book collection, I think Dave Rubin is without a doubt, one of the most represented authors on my bookshelf. I'm not the only one by any means, but, um, oh man. Yeah. I've got a lot of Dave Rubin books. Uh, and the last name is spelled R U B I N Dave Rubin, R U B I N. Okay. I hope he's, uh, I hope I hope to meet him someday. I hope he doesn't ask for, uh, for a penny every time I used some of his material for my lessons because I could not afford that, you know, Martian Murray says, I don't mind the ads when they pop up as long as they're guitar music related. Yeah, they should be related to what you're watching. I, I agree, you know. Um, and Martian Murray is making a good point. Reading music isn't too hard to learn, but sight reading is. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the technical definition of sight reading is reading music, but it's reading music with zero preparation. Like those, you know, like a, a great studio musician or a classically trained musician, you put the music in front of them and they just begin to play it. Just like someone puts a printed page in front of you and knock on wood, hopefully all of you just can read the printed page right? because you've learned to read your native language, right? Um, imagine being able to read music just that easily. It's it's not, it, it's a doable skill. It just takes daily effort. Um, but there's reading music like Marsha Murray is saying, and then is reading it and playing it correctly right away on your first try. And that is a, that's a, a you know, a next level kind of skill. <clears throat> Joseph Colasso is pointing out that Jose Feliciano was blind as well. Okay, Doug, I see your question. Um, Doug says, Jonathan, I've been trying to incorporate triads to spice up my playing. Um, yeah. Um, let me just make sure I understand your, your question here. Yep. Uh, well, triads, uh, let me tell you what, when I hear the word triad, to me, a triad is a major or minor chord. It's just another way of saying a major or minor chord. Um, so when I grab a D, I could call that a D major triad. Um, I, the word triad to me always seems kind of redundant. It seems very academic. Um, so I just called it a D chord, but triad meaning a three note chord. Um, so when you say you want to incorporate triads to spice up your playing, you might be using, clarify that for me, because you might be using that, um, in a different way. Maybe you mean, um, playing like the individual notes, like what I would call an arpeggio. So like, here's a D arpeggio. I'm going to play like this, like... taking a D arpeggio and, and giving it a certain a certain um, kind of classic sound. So you could, like, maybe that's what you mean when you say triad, um, because that for sure is a great alternative. In fact, it's an important alternative. Um, when someone says, oh, the song starts on D, and, you know, we all grab a D chord, and we 
soon we're going to start strumming a D chord. Well, the song starts off and maybe a D chord works, but that's not what you're expected to do. Maybe you're expected to do an arpeggio pattern based on the notes from a D chord, which that could be what, what this, how the song goes. You might say, well, you didn't tell me that you just said a D chord and you know, yeah, I get it. So, but, um, so Doug will clarify that for me, what you mean by a triad exactly. And then I'll, I'll be better able to answer your question. Um, <laughs> Charlie Bigo says, how does YouTube manage to put the ads in at the exact moment when someone's making a crucial point about something? Yeah. Well, I can tell you, I, I was talking to the uh, the person who invented YouTube and they said, there's one, there's one key that's going to change your life. And here it is. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, But yeah, I've noticed that. I watch YouTube videos, and I know that. And I, I I'm watching, and uh, there's the, there's the ad. Like seriously, how do, how do they know? I say I don't want to know how they know. You know, um, Stephen is asking a dumb question, which I love. You put a DQ in front of the question marks in front of the question. He said, "What was that pretty little note when you first started to play along on the D chord?" Yeah, what, what, what that when I I picked out the melody, the that thing right there. Um, that's the melody from uh, Mari's Wedding. And it just happens that the melody is based on those three notes that we all hold down when you hold down a D chord. A little bit of a coincidence, but then again, not exactly. Melody have to, has to come from somewhere, right? Um, and in this case, the melody comes from the, a D major scale in general. Um, and specifically, it comes from the three notes of a D major chord. Um, but none of this stuff is coincidence, you know. It just happens to be lucky. If this were a banjo class, you know, that's not how you play a D chord on the banjo. This is a guitar group here. Um, so it's extremely convenient that we all can grab a D major chord, D major triad. And let's say you want to make sure you've got the melody of Mari's Wedding. You know, like I said before, you want to make sure you have it in your head before you attempt to start singing it. And... And there it is right there. You like how the screen turns blue? As soon as I do something to affect that white piece of paper on the screen. Oh, the camera. Yeah, the camera has a lot of questions. It's trying not to do that. Uh, so that's what you heard me doing there, Stephen. I was just picking out, I was arpeggiating the notes of a D major chord. Um, and I was doing that to reflect the, the first melody notes of not only of Mari's wedding, but also of the song that we're going to do later, the Irish song we're going to do later. <clears throat> Charlie Beagle, I see what you're saying. Uh, Joseph Glasser says, uh, Willie Nelson's song On the Road Again can be played with C, D minor, F major 7, or regular F. Um, is that what you mean? C and G with or without the cable? Sounds about right. Road is going to wait to get on the road. Sounds about right to me. Um, sometimes I will tell students if they're still struggling with F major, just a regular F chord, right? <clears throat> sometimes you can substitute the F major seven, and it works great. Not all the time. Um, so you got to choose wisely. In case you're not sure what I'm talking about, an F major seven is similar to your classic F chord, but do not bar the two treble strings leave the first treble E string open and you get a very dreamy kind of chord known as a major seven chord. In this case, it's an F major seven. It's so close to an F, but that new ingredient, that open E string is a real game changer. It's, it's, it changed. It's a profound, profound game changer. Um, but it adds, uh, it's, it's a beautiful chord. Um, by the way, the reason it's called F major seven, um, it's because it includes the seventh note of an F major scale. Remember I told you everything, everything, everything always goes back to major scales. Um, that's why, like I said, if you know you're gonna be you know, stuck in airports, stuck on a plane, get whatever learning material you can, whether it's paper, 
some sort of website, a book, anything, and study your major scales. You will never regret it. In fact, if you never learn any music theory except, you know, what the, the, the meaning of a major scale and, uh, um, you know, the specific notes, if, if you get to the point where you can think, okay, a C major scale, no sharps or flats, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, got it, G major scale, one sharp, F major scale, one flat, and you, and you know that stuff, but that's the only thing you know about music theory whatsoever, you'll be so happy. It'll help your life immensely. We should do that sometime. We should um, we should do a segment of the live stream on the bare minimum we all should know about major scales. It, it's not going to be short, but it's not going to be an hour either, you know? Um, and with just that information, you'd be surprised how many of your questions get answered either immediately because um, you answer them yourself, or when you hear the answer to your question, music theory kind of question, when you hear that the answer, you say, oh, of course, I, yeah, okay, yeah, because because G has one sharp and it's F sharp. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, we'll do that sometime. Um, okay. So, Doug, did you clarify what you mean by triad? I see your... I see your question. I want to. I want to answer your question, but I need you to ask it again. Okay. Sometimes I need. Uh, I need a second at bat, so to speak. Hey, speaking of at bats, uh, beginner guitar lessons. Why don't you um, uh, let folks know about your YouTube channel? Um, beginner guitar lessons is more than just a guitar player. He has another passion, which I can relate to very well, and that passion is baseball cards. Hey, Chris Lloyd, thank you so much for your super chat, Chris Lloyd is making this show happen today. Thank you, Chris. Um, uh, this is a free live stream. It's going to continue to be a free live stream. But when you do a super chat, um, like Chris Lloyd did, uh, it helps pay for stuff. When that light bulb right there burns out, it's going to burn out new batteries for this microphone. They're not going to last forever, especially if I leave it on by mistake. Um, we got costs, my friends. We got costs. So I appreciate that, Chris. Thank you. Uh, oh, don't forget, everybody. Um, I'll get back to beginner guitar lessons in one second. Uh, at the beginning of the chat, and also right now, I'm putting in the Sweetwater affiliate link. Uh, if you need to buy something, why not buy it from Sweetwater? And if you're going to buy it from Sweetwater, why not do it through that link right there? Uh, the link I put in the chat, I also put in the description of every live stream video. Known as an affiliate link, when you use that link, even just to browse and uh, look around um, on Sweetwater, Sweetwater knows that I sent you there. And then if the day comes and you buy something from Sweetwater, Sweetwater sends a little bit of their profits to support what we do here. Then Sweetwater is the one paying for the uh, new batteries in the microphone, a new light bulb, and that kind of stuff. So Beginner Guitar Lessons has a, a baseball card channel. So check that out in the uh, in the chat right there. Cutting Cards, C-U-T-T-I-N-C-A-R-D-S, Cutting Cards. Um, <clears throat> he's posting about it in the, uh, in the chat right there. Stephen Mannion, thank you for your super chat as well. I appreciate that. Um, uh, baseball, I was a baseball card kid, man. Oh, but my parents wouldn't let me chew the gum which now i thank them for that who knows what kind of like carcinogens would have been like rolling around my tongue but you know it was still worth it man to get that pack of cards and even if you couldn't have the gum i got it put the gum in the trash i got it but oh man uh nothing like that the you know remember in uh charlie and the chocolate factory right opening up that candy bar hoping you're gonna get that golden ticket right the next best thing is uh, opening up a pack of cards and getting a Red Sox player. Oh, man. Oh, man. I grew up outside of Boston, and uh, it was like a miracle, a miracle if you got a, a single Red Sox card out of four, five, six packs. Holy cow. Um, but a lot of good memories of baseball cards, lots. And some of them, I mean, some names, some names are still in my brain. If I, if I sit and think about it, I, I get some names of uh, – 
of uh, players that I had their baseball cards and uh, I can, some of them, I can even picture like the, their image on the card. And then year by year, they would change the look of the card, right? Oh, good times, good times. Every once in a while, every once in a while, word would get out. And this is before we could text, right? This is like, it had to be literally word of mouth. The word would get out that the dude at the convenience store, it was on vacation and some other joker was running the place and they weren't, they weren't, they were undercharging for baseball cards. So instead of like, let's say baseball cards were a quarter, a pack of cards for a quarter, maybe some guy thought it was 10 cents. Oh man. In hindsight, he probably just felt for kids rolling in there with, you know, 62 cents and would make, but at the time we thought we got to, you know, we made haste, man. We made haste to get down to that convenience store to get those cards for a dime a pack. As long as that guy was the one, if he's selling them, man, that's if that's it's what could you say? Little hoodlums, you're little hoodlums. We hustled down there and bought as many as we could for a dime a pack. <clears throat> Anyways, so beginning guitar lessons when I saw that you had that that channel, it brought back a whole bunch of memories. Hey, Bruce and Byron in Sydney, Australia. Did the show start an hour early? It did not, but Bruce, um, uh, daylight savings time. Is this is this not an Australian thing? Daylight savings time. <laughs> so we started on time, but we also changed our clocks here in the uh, in the U.S. We changed our clocks last uh, Sunday, so it might seem it might seem like we started in a different time. I don't know. You, you don't do our uh, daylight savings time in Australia. Good for you. It's a hot mess, man. Daylight savings time is a hot mess. Okay, let's get back to uh, the guitar. Um, uh, as I wait for your questions to come in, um, I am not at a loss for words. Here's something I want to. Uh, here's something I want to throw at you. Um, oh, I see, Bruce from Australia. You're part of my uh, part of my education, Bruce. Australia does also observes daylight savings time but uh, not at the same time as the U.S. Interesting. Okay, so yours ends later this month. There you go. Mystery solved. Fascinating, man. What a, what a hot mess. Um, so I'm curious, those of you in other countries, I know we have a few countries out there. What's up with your daylight savings time? Did, you know, you, other folks, do you guys uh different times? Yeah, you, know, you guys are you got your there you go. I, I opened up a can of worms here with the uh, with the baseball card talk. <laughs> um, I think I think uh, baseball cards helped my reading ability as a as a little kid, and they also helped my um help me work on work on uh my pronunciation. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, last names, first names, they really. They put you through your paces as a young kid just trying to pronounce some of these names, right? Um, good times, good times. Okay, so my friends, the top 10 things I have in front of me, a top 10 list. Now, this is not a particularly humorous list, so uh, we're not going for laughs here. That's okay. But I thought you might be interested in the top 10 things a guitar teacher hears, specifically from adult students. We're mostly adults here. Um, Byron down there in Australia. Don't worry, you're going to be an adult someday. Um, but these are the top 10 things, okay, that guitar teachers hear from their adult students. And are there 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I do. I have 10 things. Um, and these are certainly my top 10. And so I'm going to guess that other guitar teachers hear this Oh, from many, many adult students. So, and, and if you've said any of these things to your guitar teacher, <clears throat> it's okay. It's okay. In no particular order. Um, I have been told many times a guitar student says, you know, I just want to play for my kids. It's great. It's a great reason to pick up the guitar. You got little kids and uh, you want to play for them. In fact, I can't think of a better reason to pick up the guitar. Uh, number two, top 10 thing that I've heard from my guitar students, they say, I, I never should have stopped playing because so many adult students play as younger people and then life, right? Life. And then they pick it back up in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. 
Uh, another thing I hear from many, many, many guitar students, I have no rhythm. Nah, of course you have rhythm. You do, you do. You might need some some guidance. You might need some some uh, bumpers like at the bowling alley. Um, nah, we all have rhythm. Uh, another thing I hear from so many guitar students, how long does it take to get good? It's a fair question. It's it's a, hard to answer. It's, it's a fair question. Um, uh, and just because it's it, it's a huge question doesn't stop me from having an answer. And the answer is two years. Give yourself two years on the guitar. That's that's my sh very short answer. Two years. Two months tells you nothing about your potential. Even one year. One year tells you a little bit about your potential, for sure. Give yourself two years. Short answer. And we can get back to that topic down the road. But two years of, of playing pretty much every day. Um, on the one hand, two years is an enormous amount of time, right? Oh, my God. It's it's enormous amount of time. Then again, if you're an adult, one way you can prove that you're an adult is to acknowledge that two years can go by like that, right? Not for kids. Byron, Byron, right? You can you can uh, back me up on this. For kids, two years is like, you know, for kids, two hours can seem like an eternity, right? For adults, if you're an adult, and I know I am, chances are two years, you know that two years can go by so fast. So to say, yeah, it takes two years to get pretty good at the guitar. Dude, it only takes two years. Like, come on, play every day. Take some lessons, watch some YouTube videos, get some good books. You know, you can do it. Okay, another of the top 10 question, questions that I hear from my adult guitar students. They say to me, are you sure you can teach an old dog new tricks? Yeah, yeah. But we got to choose wisely, you know. Um, I have seen adults struggle with certain chords, you know. And, and make extremely slow progress on certain chords. So, okay, we table that, and we learn a bunch of other really cool things that use a different type of motor skill, you know? Maybe our fancy finger picking is on hold, but we do a lot of chord strumming, yeah. So you, 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 you learn, you know, you choose your new tricks wisely, you know? Because that gets your confidence up. You're having fun. You want to pick up the instrument, right? You come back for more lessons. Um, life is good. We all win, you know? Another common thing I hear from my uh, adult guitar students, they say to me, oh, I know this one guy. He can play anything. Anything. <laughs> and I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. But when, when guitar teachers talk amongst ourselves and we say, oh, man, you know that people say, oh, I know a guy who can play anything. My cousin can play anything. My neighbor can play anything. You know, we think, yeah, you know, that's amazing that your cousin had the time to research every piece of music ever composed for the guitar and has systematically worked through, you know, a few hundreds, hundred years of guitar music. That's really, that's really outstanding. That's incredible. Because that's not, I know, that's not what you mean. But what you mean, and I, I get what you mean, what you mean is you have someone in your life who really can play a, a lot of nice stuff and you want to be that guy and you should you should want to be that guy. Um, but I'm just saying it's a common thing that we hear. My cousin can play anything. I know. I know. That cousin, man, I'm sure this is one guy who's somehow related to all of us. He's all of our cousins and he can play anything on the guitar. I know. It's good to be around like someone like that, though. Someone who is experiencing and do stuff Hopefully, they have a variety of skills, and the number one skill they have is the skill of patience, willingness to share, generosity. That's the word I'm looking for, the skill or the characteristic of generosity, that they want to play something slowly and teach it to you. Okay, uh, another thing that I've just heard from most of my guitar students, they say, I, I know I'm never going to play at Carnegie Hall, or I know I'm never going to play in Nashville. I know I'm, I get it, fill in the blank. Um, but you showed up and you're taking your guitar lesson, and and that's a very cool thing. Um, so, yeah, yeah, go to Carnegie Hall to, to for another reason. Go there to enjoy a beautiful performance at Carnegie Hall. Go to Nashville to hear. One, one of my students actually is in Nashville right now and sent me a clip. Um, because I had said to him, man, I, I, I'm sure you're going to stop in at some restaurant in Nashville. And the Tuesday night entertainment at that restaurant is going to be so good, even though you've never heard of the person. And they're just set up in the corner, uh, 
and they're going to be so good because you know music Nashville is a music town and that's what you get in music town and sure enough he sent me a, a video from the bar restaurant he was at with a very good sounding band set up and playing um but anyways my point is <clears throat> i know i know i'm never going to play carnegie hall but but yeah but you still want to make music part of your life very cool okay only a couple more uh one thing that I hear from every guitar, adult guitar student sooner or later is they declare that blank chord is impossible. Yeah, they're all impossible until they're not, right? And it's interesting, it's not always the F chord, although F is the number one chord, but I've had students tell me that C major is impossible. Can't do it, can't get this sound good, it's impossible. I've had students tell me that my G chord for lack of a better name, the G major chord with the middle ring and pinky. I've had students tell me I've been doing it for four days and it is definitely impossible. Um, I've had students tell me that D is, they said, geez, I never, I thought I'd never be able to get D to sound good. So, yep, I get it. I get it. Uh, okay, down to the final two. Final two things and the top 10 things. Uh, many students have said to me, if I could just play blank, I'd be happy. I love to hear that. I love that because then we can make a plan to start working towards that thing. And um, very often it's a pretty modest thing. It's, 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 um, it's a, a chord strumming song. You know, if I could just play, you know, something from Tom Petty, or if I could just play, I don't know, like a nice little instrumental tune. But very often when a student says that to me, <clears throat> I'm pleasantly surprised at how reasonable the song is. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. Um, you know. Okay. And the final one, I save this for last because it's one of my favorites. Thankfully, I do not hear this from every guitar student, um, adult guitar student. I've heard it from a couple of students over the years. I've taught since 1992. Um, and so I, fortunately, I've only heard this question a couple of times. But I've had both adults and kids look at me and say, um, so do you have like another job or... Let's give that a, there we go. I can tell you how that makes me feel. It makes me feel like, uh, right? That's how it makes me feel. Like, what does that mean? Do you have another job? I don't know. Um, although as my wife put it, <laughs> I've never had a real job. I get that. I get that. Um, sorry, sweetie. It's just that one of the, funniest things i've my wife is a is a funny woman but that's one of my favorite funny things that she said <laughs> and she went i think she was trying to be funny in, it was in the context of a conversation about work and unemployment the sound effects are not working are you kidding me oh come on you didn't hear any sound effects you didn't hear that trombone no is it too quiet oh well, i don't know it's supposed to be working oh no uh, no, let's not worry about the sound effects now. Oh, well. Uh, yeah. So she has a point. Never had a real job. I don't know. Um, but the times that I've been asked that, I have been somewhat uh, speechless. Um, do you have another job? No, this is what, <laughs> this is what you get, man. Although, to be fair, occasionally in the past <clears throat> 32 years, occasionally I've had uh, small side jobs because I moved from one place to another place and had to pick up a gig, you know, to uh, pick up a gig to, um, to pay the bills until my student level, you know, was enough. Um, in fact, that's how I met my wife, relocated from uh, Chicago to Connecticut. Uh, got a job at a bookstore, and the rest is history. Met my wife. Yep. Uh, so, anyways, those are the, the top ten questions that I have uh, heard over the years from my adult guitar students. And now, now you know. Ah, uh, well, okay. And I'm here for your question questions. So don't be hesitant uh, to ask a question. Uh, uh, Martian Murray asked a question. Um, 
uh, asks, would you recommend trying to learn nylon and steel string guitars or focus on one? No, man, if you have both, if you have if, if any guitars, I encourage you to, um, if you're so inclined, uh, to, to acquire a few different guitars um, and, uh, and, and have fun on all of them. Um, number one, it keeps life interesting. Uh, number two, certain things work better on, on different guitars. Um, and I'm hoping that all of you play for many, 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 many years forever. Right. Um, uh, and in that time, I hope you pursue a bunch of different things and certain, you know, different, um, guitar styles, techniques, types of music, and certain things just make sense on certain instruments. So, um, using a plastic flat pick does not make sense on a nylon string guitar, but um, nylon string guitars, also known as classic guitars, are great for finger picking. The strings are so sensitive. Um, the fretboards are wider, um, not to make your left hand work more, although technically your left hand has to work a little bit more. But by having a wider fretboard, the string spacing for your picking hand um, is, is a wider string spacing, makes it easier to get your picking hand fingers in between the strings and play. Um, and finger picking on a on a nylon string guitar, or like actually pursuing classical guitar on a nylon string guitar. Um, so beautiful, just beautiful. I hope all of you listen to uh, a little bit of classical guitar as part of your diet of guitar music. Some of you might listen to it all the time, but man, whether listening to it or just as good, um, watching videos of anybody playing beautiful classical music on, on nylon string guitar are very inspiring and beautiful. Um, so, Marsh and Murray, getting back to your question. Um, yeah. Um, but if you play, hey, Bruce, thank you for your super chat. You guys, I really appreciate this. Um, Bruce made a super chat. And you can do the same thing in case you haven't figured out that dollar sign at the bottom of the uh, live stream, um, at the bottom of the chat. Hey, um, for those of you um, who want to support the channel, the super chat is simply one way to do it. You can head over to my website and buy yourself an ebook or a regular book. Um, and you'll definitely be supporting our community here and you'll be getting something from it. Ooh, and don't forget, I'm going to get back to talking about knowledge and guitar in a second. Um, my free blues guide, in fact, I want to make sure that I remind you guys about my free blues guide. A lot of you know what I'm talking about. A lot of you have the free blues guide. Uh, Hold on here. Hmm. Okay. So to finish off these thoughts, um, if any of you all are likely are, are uh, lucky enough to to have multiple guitars, um, or you there's one on your horizon, or you're you know you might inherit one or, or something, or your neighbor is, is done with it or whatever. Um, oh yeah, grab grab it and and look into what that guitar does best um, and then pursue that on that guitar definitely uh, on a on a more general note it's say you sit down to practice and you know you've got a few minutes you're gonna practice something um, I, I will always have the goal to motivate you guys to turn a 10 minute practice session into a 20 minute practice session and one way to do that is you do 10 minutes on on one guitar grab your second guitar and do the same thing on that guitar. Why? I want to see how it feels, see what happens um, for the fun of it, for the novelty of it. But there goes another five, 10 minutes, you know, or more, right? Um, so yeah, I'm always going to encourage you to, um, to keep a second guitar handy. And we haven't even started talking about the idea of keeping one guitar in a different tuning. And so you can pursue that. Oh, so much, so much good stuff. Um, LR is asking, am I a volunteer firefighter? I was a volunteer firefighter for eight years. Um, and because I moved from one town to another town, I had to leave that particular department. Um, and, and frankly, I, I just got, I got so busy with music as these live streams take up more of my, my time, um, you know, preparing, um, and just videos and books and stuff like that. I, I just don't have the time. So I, I, I did my eight years as a volunteer firefighter. For those of you who know how it works, I took my Fire One course, 
uh, in my hazmat course. I took my fire two course. I got cross trained as an EMT. Uh, so I, I served as an EMT for four years um, during the pandemic. So that kept things interesting. I was that person in the it all zipped up with, uh, you know, like you wouldn't even know it was me inside because all you can see is my little eyes. Um, so, yeah, so I did eight years as a volunteer firefighter and four years as an EMT. Um, and uh, those of you who are first responders, thank you for your service. And those of you who have first responders in your life or in your family, uh, thank you for supporting them. Um, whether they're volunteer or a paid responder, it's tough, man. It's tough. Uh, um, uh, but it's also rewarding. So for those of you who are considering being, especially if, you're, if you live in a town with a volunteer fire department, dude, such an interesting way to spend, you know, time um, is being involved in the volunteer fire department. Wow. You, you just, you, you look, you certainly look at your town differently, um, that you, you recognize a lot more faces, you know, all of a sudden you go to the supermarket at, on a Sunday morning and you know so many people because you just met all the people in the volunteer fire department that you are now part of. Um, there are people who maybe responded to a call at their house or a motor vehicle accident. And, and uh, hey, Charlie, thank you for your super chat too. I appreciate that. Um, so those of you who are thinking about it um, and same thing with uh, being an EMT. Technically, I was a volunteer EMT, but you got paid um, or the in incentive pay. So you did get paid a little bit for every call you went on. <clears throat> and uh, um, and that's, you know, that's being an EMT is its own challenge. Um, but very rewarding, very rewarding. And uh, I feel like I did my tour of duty. And, and now it's, I, I just, long story short is I can't, I can't, I find it difficult when anything in my life infringes on the musical part of my life, it becomes hard for me to juggle the two. And um, when an EMT shows up at your house, you don't want them to be thinking about guitar in the back of their mind. You want them to really be focused on, you know, the piece of food you're choking on. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, I did my tour of duty and, um, and, uh, now it's, it's good to be back with doing uh, music full time. Charlie Bigo says, I couldn't deal with dead bodies. Um, well, <laughs> you do. You find a way, man. You find a way. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Chris Kreitz uh, has a question. What do you say to a student who claims to play the lesson material better at home, but flubs everything in front of you? Oh, I am so glad you brought this up. Um, that that if I were to add one more thing to the list, um, maybe I didn't put this on the list because I, I don't know. Maybe it was too obvious. I, I couldn't see the the forest for the trees. Um, I definitely, in fact, it's almost surprising if a student doesn't say to me, "I play this better at home." But but I think there's a phenomenon going on here, and here's what I think it is. Um, first of all, it's very clear to me as a teacher. When a student has practiced and they know the material, they might not be great at it, but they clearly have been putting in the time they, they, they know what their job is. Um, uh, because they, they're, mo most of my teaching is with printed material. So we're looking at a music stand and they're reading the music on the music stand. And they're not squinting at the music. They're not trying to decipher hieroglyphics. They know what the paper says. They just haven't mastered the skills yet. That's very easy to see. When a student is squinting at it like they've never seen it before, pretty pretty clear they haven't practiced. But here's the phenomenon I'm talking about. And it took me a few years before I finally came up with this, this theory. Um, when a student plays something for 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, they're working this thing, and they, you know, I, I, they've reached the peak of their performance. At the end of 30 minutes, they're, let's say they're, quote, pretty good at it, you know? And it's because they just played it for 30 minutes. The next day they come sit down with me. I say, oh yeah, let's hear it. Well, they don't have that 30 minute ramp up, right? But in their memory, they're quote, pretty good at it, right? So then they go to play it for me and they go, oh God, I, I did it so much better at home. Yeah, I get that. It's not just nervousness playing in front of your teacher, although sure that's part of it. If you, you, you don't have that ramp up, that warm up, that, you know, 20 or 30 minutes that you did last night when you worked on it, you know? Um, and when I hear myself say it, of course it's really 
Well, it's, it's so obvious, you know, but my point is the student has the memory of their peak performance. And so when they say, I did it better at home. Yeah, they did do it better at home without a doubt. Everyone does better, you know, at home, especially though, especially when you remember the peak performance. That's that's what I'm calling it, peak performance. Um, hey, so my blues guide, head on over. Many of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you don't. That's okay. I'm putting my website in the chat. Song-bike.com. Head over to my website. This is for anybody. You don't have to be a member of my website, although I encourage you to become a member of my website. Um, the Blues Guide, and it looks like this if you print it out. What you're going to get, you're going to put in your email uh, address and your name, <clears throat> and you get this sent email to you as a PDF, and then you can choose to print it out or not. Um, it's short. It's sweet. Uh, it's very cool. If you do print it out, um, I mean, it costs a little bit if you send out to Staples or some copy center. Um, I, I, I use this for teaching, so I got a hard copy of the spiral binding, a decent, you know, cardstock cover. But you could easily spend, you know, I don't know, 12, 15 bucks to print out something that ultimately is only 15 pages or something. But then again, it's worth it. Anyways, it's free, 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 free. Head over to song-bike.com. Um, get yourself a copy. And there's an accompanying video on YouTube that shows you how everything is supposed to sound. Very cool book. I'm so proud of that. And it's free. Um, oh, LR says it cost uh, $8.10 at Staples. Excellent. There you go. There you go. Um, um, hey, LR, I think you sent me a picture of your copy, right? I think you did. I think you sent me a picture. Someone did. I think it was you. Sent me a picture of what it looked like when you had it printed out. And, and yeah. Um, very cool. I like seeing that. Love seeing that. Uh, so... <laughs> Chris is sharing with us. Uh, I always ask my instructor how he maintains such patience with my poor skills. He replies, you're better than my eight-year-old. Um, and, you know, that's, yeah. I mean, you need patience. But to teach anything, you need patience, right? Um, I mean, frankly, as much as I like hearing people compliment, compliment me and say, oh, you are so patient. I don't know of any job where patience isn't one of the top skills you need. You know what I mean? Like, you can be a Navy SEAL. You need some patience, right? <laughs> I mean, I think every job needs patience. It's just that maybe the patience that a, a music teacher requires is really obvious. It's right there. They're patiently listening to the student, you know, play. Um, uh, I, I like that, though. You're better than my eight-year-olds. One time I was talking with a student, and I was talking about my other students. But my the adult I was talking to misunderstood I was saying, oh, man, I got this six-year-old who, uh, who is pretty good at, you know, playing a, an E minor chord. And, but I have a 10-year-old who's doing, like, power chords. And I got a 12. And I'm telling these stories. And I, when I finish, and my adult student looks at me and goes, wait, how many kids do you have? I'm like, these aren't my kids. I was about 22 at the time. I'm like, these aren't my kids. These are my students. I'm 22. I don't have nine kids under the age of 14, you know. Ah, uh, good times, good times, you know, good times. Um, okay, Michael Fisher, I see your question. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, oh, by the way, another thing that I've learned, and I don't do this intentionally, but if uh, if I tell, I tell a student to, to practice something for a minute while I walk away and whatever, pour myself a little more coffee or something, um, the student does so much better when I'm quote, you know, not paying attention. Oh, they, they, and so I, I, I might be refilling my coffee, but I'm totally listening. Like, yep, there it is. They, they sound much better than they would if I was staring at them. You know, I love it. I love it. Makes me want to drink more coffee, walk away. Uh, okay. I think I'm going to go back to Michael's question. Um, because I don't think I've missed, um, uh, uh, LR is asking, is Woody Guthrie's This Land is Your Land suitable for the chord melody book? Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Pretty short song. It's repetitive because of the verses. <laughs> Bruce is uh, confirming <coughs> that his son Byron says two years does feel like forever. Yeah, I get it. Going back to our comment about you know how long does it take um, to play the guitar? Okay, Deborah, I see your question. I'll get to that in a minute. So Michael says, uh, Jonathan, I'm working on Ben's 
bending. I never thought the speed of the bend was a thing, but as I play, it seems to me that the speed of the bend up and down actually matters, also holding it. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the more you get into any art form, um, really any, any pursuit in life, the details begin to matter more and more. Um, and simultaneously, you begin to prioritize the details, you know? Um, and so all details are not created equal. Even as they pile up, you begin to realize, man, there's, there's all this stuff that matters. Um, yeah. Uh, so the speed of the bend. Um, Michael, you, I know what bend means. You may also be talking about vibrato, which is, is bending the string. Well, vibrato, like wiggling the string. I'm doing this on uh, uh, seven on the third G string. So for the record, there's an example of a vibrato. I'm using three fingers, my ring fingers on seven, seventh fret, middle on the sixth, index on the fifth fret, all on the same third string, G string. And I'm pulling the string down towards the floor and I'm letting it come. I'm actually, I'm manually just scraping the string across the fretboard. I'm pulling it down and pushing it back to the neutral position and down and back. Okay, so there's vibrato. We'll get to the bending part in a second. Um, so in case you were using the term bend to mean vibrato as well, um, vibrato can be fast or slow. Some people call it shallow or wide. Um, a, a shallow vibrato is very quick. You could call it a quick vibrato. And a wide vibrato, that seasick, waya, waya, waya. Kind of, kind of feeling. Um, by the way, vibrato easier on electric guitar for sure, and easier on the highest frets for sure. Right. So practicing whether it's bends or vibrato, <clears throat> don't judge your ability to do bends or vibrato on the first few frets on the guitar. Right. Go up to 12, 11, 10, 9, and practice bending and vibrato up there before you before you beat yourself up about how good your vibrato is. Um, so bending. It could be a, a fast bend or a slow bend. In general, in general, bending is a relatively fast thing. I mean, yes, you can do a slow bend, but in general, it's way more common for bends to be really, you know, pretty, pretty quick. I mean, I'm, I'm beginning to bend almost from the from the moment my pick plucks the string, my bending is starting. Um, so in general, bending, a pure bend is relatively fast, yeah. Um, you can combine the two. You can bend a note and leave it bent and sh give it a little vibrato while it's bent. Yeah. For those of you who can't see my face, you don't want to see my face because I'm grimacing because it's a weird thing to do on acoustic guitar. It's doable. Um, it's not my forte, you know. For the record, I now have little dents in my fingertips. Ah, it's okay. Builds character. Um, so I don't know, Michael, I hope some of those thoughts are, are helpful to you. Um, be patient with yourself with bends. Uh, if and when you feel aches and pains, in any place but your fingertips, take a break from bending, you know? And if you're bending on acoustic guitar, don't don't push yourself. Um, bends are so much easier on electric guitar. Um, it, it's, you, you don't get extra points for playing through pain, except maybe the tender fingertips, maybe that part, okay. Um, Deborah's question, how do I play A minor 11? Um, an A minor 11 chord. Uh, for the record, an A minor 11 chord is an A minor chord plus a few other notes. <clears throat> um, and without knowing the exact context, uh, let me think, A, C, E, but it could also include a G, it could include a B, and it could include a D, A, G, E, B, and D. I mean, technically, <laughs> If you strummed your five treble strings, meaning everything but your fat sixth E string, 
I mean, that is an A minor 11. Literally, your five strings open, no fingers. I mean, that it's five different notes. We got the A, or we don't have the C, but bear with me. We have an A, we have an E, we have the B, the G, the D. It's, it's, uh, it's everything but a C note. But I don't want to cop out and just say, oh, that's it. You've got it now. But that is, that is technically an A minor 11 chord. Okay. Now let's see. I'm going to go. I don't know if you guys are internet buffs, but I've, uh, there's something called Google that I rely on now and then. And so let's see if I Google A minor 11. Let's see. Let's see what kind of images show up here. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. I'm on something called Jamplay, jamplay.com. I'm seeing different things that they do. Huh. It's not bad, but I don't love it. Let's see, A minor 11. I'm going to search for images. I want to find one that I love. Okay, well, in A minor, I mean, this is, this is almost what I said, but I see where they're coming from. Okay, I'm back here. If you do an old-fashioned A minor chord, three-finger A minor chord, but you take off your middle and ring, so only your index is down. I mean, that, that maybe is a step better than the one I showed you with all open strings. Um, because it has that C, that's the second fret on the second, sorry, first fret on the second string where my index finger is, um, which technically, any time a chord is called an A minor, you need that note, that's the note C, that's what makes it minor. I, I feel like I want to give you one more, though, because I don't want to, I mean, I know there's other ways of playing it, believe me, I, I'm aware, but I want to give you maybe one more that's kind of relevant or easy. Who am I kidding? I want to give you one that's easy. And I'm just not seeing any that are that are as easy as what I just showed you. So okay, here's an interesting one. Who do I, who do I have to thank for this? Bear with me, you guys. Uh, who do I have to thank? Because it might as well give credit. This is from Riff Spot. Riff Spot. R I F F spot riff spot okay thanks riff spot why not okay so here's how riff spot suggests as one of many ways of playing a minor chord okay you're ready all right i've never done this chord before i kind of like the it feels good it sounds weird but any chord with a name like a minor 11 is gonna it's gonna sound weird okay you ready <clears throat> anytime you learn a new chord it's good to put down your index finger first so index finger, second string, third fret, B string, third fret, index finger. Okay. Ring finger, fourth string, fifth fret. That's your D string, fifth fret. Pinky, third string, fifth fret. When you strum, do not include the fat sixth E string. Everything else. sounds like that. Now, why would you ever want to play that when the other ones I showed you are a lot easier? Because maybe your hand is in this position. I mean, it's in this vicinity anyways, you know, totally possible. Yeah, I can, I can imagine a context where that A minor 11 totally makes sense, you know? Okay. Those are some of my thoughts. Uh, Martian Murray is saying, that's a piano chord. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, I think I'm caught up in terms of the questions. Let's do our second play along of the night. Why not? Still, so grab your guitars. Still with D's, A's, and G's. We have from Ireland, I'll tell me ma. I'll tell me ma when I go home. Okay, is that going to stay there? Do not curve away on me. You need to D, G, and A. Okay? Just like we did for Mari's wedding. 
And in case you guys missed it, we did Mari's wedding earlier. And we got 44 of you out there. Beautiful. Uh, um, coincidentally, maybe not coincidentally, uh, same three chords. What is a little bit of a coincidence, the melody, once again, is actually based on the three strings you're squeezing when you squeeze a D chord. I'll tell me ma. There's the three notes right there. Third, we'll just grab a D chord, third string, second fret, that's I'll tell. Second string, third fret, where your ring finger is, me, ma. And ma is the first string, second fret, where your middle finger is. Okay, tell me ma when I go home. Let me get my lyrics. Uh, we're going to do the same thing, friends. The chord names you see in front of you there. You are welcome to strum those chords one down some every time you see the name. So four down sums on D, two on A, two on D. Um, before we start it for real, I'll give you a quick little preview. It's sound like this. Like, I tell me ma when I go home, boys won't leave the girls alone. Right, just nice, simple things, right? And you can go through the whole tune. By the way, I'm calling the second part the chorus. It's not really the chorus in a, in, uh, in a true sense, where the chorus is the lyric that keeps repeating, you know, every time it gets to the chorus. It's the same as the previous chorus. Um, uh, but it is different than the first part, so I, I'm calling them verse and chorus. This whole page is going to repeat several times, you know? <clears throat> okay. Just like with the first tune we did tonight, Mari's Wedding, um, after I get started doing it the way I just indicated, I'm going to change to playing a boom chick on each one of the chords. Like, I tell me ma, when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. Okay. Again, just to be clear, my left hand is not going to be doing anything different. It's not going to be going any faster. Nothing's going to change. How my picking hand, my right hand, approaches the chords, how, how I, the pattern, right? My strum pattern, that's what's going to change, you know? I like doing it both ways. Um, hey, beginner guitar lessons. Thank you for uh, moderating today. Thank you. Um, uh, I like showing you guys how many songs can be strummed more than one way. Partly, hey, for the edification of it. Um, also because I'm hoping some of you, I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that, of all of you, 37 watching at the moment here, you have a variety of skills. And I want to include the folks who can do this. And that's where you're at right now, which is a beautiful place to be at. You're changing chords, you're hitting those downstrokes, and that's where you're at. That's excellent. And I want to include you guys who are at that moment. You know, that's where you're at in playing. Because why not? Because we're all here. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, Let's just do it. I got my Eric. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I have a sip of water. Now, don't look, okay? Turn away. Turn away. I'm drinking water out of a plastic jug. I know. I know. Mmm. Keeping it classy, Connecticut. Keeping it classy. Just how my day worked out. You know, my day worked out that that's what I had a available to me all right okay candy is saying uh go over the strum pattern again sure only, only take a second strum pattern number one every alphabet letter every chord name you strum one down strum for each one of those so four down strums on the d two on the a two on the d so your right hand assuming you're right-handed is just gonna be going like this that is a valid strum pattern it's a basic strum pattern second one for every chord name Every, every letter on that sheet of paper, you're going to hit the root note as an individual note. It's going to be the D string during the D chord, the fourth string, the A string during the A chord, the fifth string, and during the G chord, it's going to be the sixth string. So you hit the root note, and then a simple, si simple light down strum on the treble strings, known as the boom chick, like this.
I'll be going a little bit faster than that, but not too much, you know. And if you're good at that, awesome. If you can't quite do that and change chords and harmonize with me at the same time, that is totally okay. Um, uh, but but this is but it's a skill you want to work at. So why not work at it, you know, on a great Irish folk tune? Why not, you know? Um, and I'm going to switch. I'm going to start off with the basic downstrokes, and then I'm going to switch over to the uh, boom chick. Um, Cause why not? Okay, I'll see you on the other side. Two, three, four. Tell me, Ma, when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. They pull my hair, they stole my comb. That's all right till I go home. She is handsome, she is pretty. She's the belle of Belfast City. She's a chord in one, two, three. Pray, won't you tell me who is she? Tell my ma when I go home. The boys won't leave the girls alone. My hair stole my comb. That's all right till I go home. Okay, ready to keep going? I'm going to start at the top of the page again. I'm not going to stop this time. Top of the page. Two, three, four. Albert Mooney says he loves her. All the boys are fighting for. Knock at the door and they ring that bell. Oh, my true love, are you well? Out she comes as white as snow. Rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. Old Johnny Murray says she will die. She doesn't get the fella with the roving eye. Now my ma, when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. My hair, they stole my comb. That's all right till I go home. Okay, one more time from the top of the page. Two, three. Let the wind and the rain and the hail blow high and the snow come tumbling from the sky. She's as nice as apple pie. She'll get her own lad by and by. When she gets a lad of her own, she won't tell her ma when she comes home. Let them all come as they will, for it's Albert Booney she loves still. I tell my ma when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. Oh, my hair, they stole my comb. That's all right till I go home. She is handsome, she is pretty, she's the belle of Belfast. She's according one, two, three. Ray, won't you tell me who is she? There we go. All right. <laughs> Had to call a few audibles in there. It's all right. Did you hang in there? A lot of D's and A's, occasional G's. Okay. So <laughs> everything I did was reflected there. I realized I jumped around a little bit. Didn't intend to do that, but all right, you guys hung in there, right? Candy tried. That's all you can do. That's all you can do is try, you know. Um, number one uh, goal of mine is this doesn't stop here, right? I mean, the live stream is going to wrap up in a few minutes, but, you know, now you've got this tune. You've got some Ds, As, and Gs. You've got basic strum pattern, slightly harder strum pattern, you know, um, I chose this key because it works for me, but there's a lot of versions of, of all these traditional tunes um, in lots of keys. So doesn't mean you can't use this one. You might just have to capo it up. How do you know? You know, trial and error. You know, you, you have to uh, have to go by trial and error um, unless you know a little bit of music theory and then there's no trial and error, uh, but that's a different day. Once again, I, both of the tunes that we did tonight, I'll tell me Ma and good old Mari's wedding right here. Um, I heard him first on a, a very cool Van Morrison album called Irish Heartbeat featuring Van Morrison and the Chieftains. Love that album so much. Um, most everything on there is a traditional Irish tune, but there's at least one or two um, original tunes um, that Van Morrison wrote. Everything else is traditional. <clears throat> um, uh, it was such a cool album. Um, so Van Morrison, I saw Van Morrison in concert a long time ago now, 20 years ago. Um, played a, a nice theater in uh, Connecticut. And it was a Monday night. And I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Um, 
But Van Morrison played for just over an hour. And people were very upset. I've never been to a show where people, you know, as they walk out to the parking lot, where people are just visibly, audibly angry, unhappy, debating whether or not to ask for their money back. Um, not just because the show was barely over an hour, um, but he didn't he didn't play nice. He didn't do all that showbiz stuff. How you doing, Connecticut? Um, and I had to laugh because number one, uh, I, Van Morrison, I I, I did, had no he doesn't have that reputation of uh, you know being Mister Friendly all the time. Um, secondly, I had to laugh a little bit because what Van Morrison did during during the show, the hour hour and ten minutes, whatever, he played a bunch of his most famous songs. His voice sounded great. He himself played saxophone, harmonica, and guitar. The band was terrific. The band, these guys were like veteran musicians, all dressed in black, killing the tunes. They sounded great. It's a great show. And yet, mm, you know, it's tough, man. That's show business, man. Objectively, the, the, the songs sounded great. And Van Morrison sounded great. But, you know, was the audience happy? No, no. There's that show business for you, you know. You know, Monday night in Connecticut, maybe, maybe he wasn't inspired to, to play a big, long show. Then again, for all I know, that's what he was doing with that whole tour, maybe. Um, but he played Moon Dance. He played a bunch of the tunes that people would hope he would play, you know. He just didn't play nice. Uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, Charlie Beagle is mentioning the Dropkick Murphys. Yeah, there's a whole phenomenon, right? Of um, you know, bands, the Pogues, right? Bands doing doing traditional Irish songs with a rock and roll attitude, right? Exciting stuff. Good stuff. Okay, my friends. Um, last chance for questions. We're coming up on the two-hour mark, but not too late. So, so uh, don't be shy. Jump on those. Uh, jump on those questions. And uh, just remember, put a few question marks in advance, please, so I know that you are directing your question at me. I'm looking for some more of that nice white paper. Where are my white paper? Oh, there it is. All right. Um, hey, before I forget, next Saturday, I'm good if you're good. Uh, next Saturday is uh, the 23rd of uh, March. No reason why I won't be here. Um, Candy, I see your question. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, I just want to double check that I went over what I wanted to go over here. Um, I did, I did. Check, check, check. You know, I always like when you guys uh, tell me where you're listening from. Uh, and every place has its own unique character. You want to know what the unique character of this part of Connecticut is? Uh, a stone's throw from where I'm sitting right now is the town of Lyme, Connecticut. L-Y-M-E, Lyme, Connecticut. Any guess what disease started in Lyme, Connecticut? That one. The other, the one, yeah. Lyme disease. Lyme disease. So so that's where I live. And if any of you suffer from Lyme disease, you have my sympathy. So far, I've dodged it. But that's because I don't go anywhere near uh, trees and woods, if I can avoid it. Um, but... Uh, Lyme disease, yeah, you know, and the Lyme is a, is a very pretty town. There's Lyme and its neighbor, Old Lyme. And here are two fun facts. Um, Lyme and Old Lyme are uh, smallish towns, so they combine for a high school, which is Lyme Old Lyme High School. Lyme Old Lyme, which for forever has been known as LOL High School. Isn't that cute? Isn't that adorable? LOL High School, get it? Lyme Old Lyme, LOL High School. I believe it was known as LOL High School well before there's even an internet and texting and all that kind of stuff. And, but now LOL high school, kind of cute. And the other thing is, uh, yeah, ticks, you got it. Michael Fisher ticks. Um, uh, the, the community has embraced their identity as, as the home of Lyme disease. And, you know, I don't know about all their sports teams, but at least some of the sports teams, the mascot is the ticks and you'll see kids with like lacrosse, They'll have the lacrosse shirt on and it'll be ticks. It's known as ticks lacrosse. And like, 
it's just we take it for granted around here like oh when my when my daughter is nine she's going to be old enough to do ticks lacrosse oh yeah my kid did ticks last year yeah yeah and we just take it for granted around here like, ticks uh there you go there you go and yes scott um we also uh have a reputation for good lobster rolls around here um start saving now if you intend to come east and have a lobster roll in connecticut just open some sort of uh cd account at your local bank lobster rolls are not cheap not cheap at all uh dj is watching from cedartown georgia cedartown slash rome georgia love it love it uh if only i could uh if only i could see more of the country <clears throat> um someday um candy's asking a great question suspended cords sus cords Candy says, what is a sus cord? What's up with sus cords? Um, sus, short for suspended. Um, let's play a couple, and then we'll talk about the, the theory and talk about the, um, uh, I don't know, we'll dig into it a little bit. Absolute most common suspended cord. Some of you know this from Free Fallen from Tom Petty, the D suspended cord. A D major chord with your pinky. First skinny string, third fret. A D chord. Of course, Tom Petty slapped a capo on. I'll do it without the capo. And Tom Petty wrote an entire song, presumably made some decent money from Free Fallen based on that scrap of music right there. There you go. Now you know Free Fallen. There you go. That's it. D, D suspended, D suspended, back to D to A. Okay, um, how about A suspended? I've got my three finger A major chord and I'm gonna let my ring finger scooch up. My ring finger is currently on the second string, second fret. I'm gonna let it scooch up to the second string, third fret, and that is an A suspended. Technically, I should give it a full name, A suspended four. That D was the D suspended four. Don't worry, we'll talk about the name, the numbers in a minute. Um, uh, so I'll leave it at those two for the moment. A D suspended four and an A suspended four. A suspended four, you could put your pinky down on the second string, third fret. Um, but it's also kind of cool to let your, your ring finger slide up to the second string, third fret. An A suspended four. Um, before I tell you the, the theory behind this, let's go back to the D. A D suspended two chord. Just take your D major chord, but lift off your middle finger so now your first skinny string is wide open. Also a suspended chord known as D suspended two. And the A suspended two is also achieved by lifting off a finger. There's my A major chord. I'm lifting off my ring finger from the second skinny string, the second string B string so now my second string is open and that is a A suspended two chord there's only two kinds of suspended chords suspended four and suspended two I, I don't know if you'll ever see something an A suspended blah 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 blah, blah. Um, but technically if it's anything other than A suspended two or A suspended four it's wrong or at least I can't imagine why that would be right in any way um, so so uh, suspending a chord. Okay, what does suspending even mean in the first place? It means you're taking a chord that was major or minor and you were rem removing or somehow eliminating the one note that was giving it the major flavor or the one note that was giving it the minor flavor. And by taking away that one note that was either, that was making it major or that was making it minor, by taking away that one note you are taking away its identity. It's not major anymore. It's not minor. Like, what is it? You've suspended the identity of the chord. It's 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 suspended. It's in it's in. I love that word because it gives this sense that you're in midair. I mean, talk about coincidence. Free fallen, right? You're you're playing a D major chord, and then you're you're up in the air. It's not major or minor. It's D suspended four, and then you go back to the D, back on the ground again to the A. I don't know. It's a little bit of a stretch, but kind of cool, like suspended, free fallen, probably a coincidence, but mm, I don't know. When you when you create an extremely successful popular song with such a scrap of a chord change, 
maybe there's something to it, you know? I don't know. Um, okay, so now just to dig in a little bit deeper. Um, ooh, I have white paper and a Sharpie. Oh, it makes me so happy. I can't even tell how happy this makes me. Okay, I'm going to use the D as, as an example. Those of you who have been around for much of this broadcast, live stream, what do I keep saying? Everything in music theory, everything keeps coming back to what? What's at the heart of all discussion of music theory? The major scale. Because we're about to talk about uh, D suspended chords, there's your D major scale. That's going to be a point of reference. Why not? Um, okay. What makes the D major scale interesting? It has two sharp notes, F sharp and C sharp. So for those of you who are listening, not watching, a D major scale is D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and then you end up at D again. And that's no matter what instrument you play that on, you're going to get that, excuse me, that classic do, re, mi sound, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, of a D major scale. Okay. This is going to be quicker than you think. Some of you are like, uh, I might want to refresh my beverage. Don't do it yet. This is going to be quick. You don't want to miss a thing. Okay. A D. Oh yeah. See how the, see how the light changed when there's no white paper up there. It's me crazy. There we go. There's some white paper. Okay. A D major chord. Those three notes. Don't go anywhere. D sus four. D sus two. Okay. One, four, five. One, two, five. All right. Here comes. I love this stuff. I just wish I knew more chord theory. I mean, I know a bit. I know as it gets into jazzier stuff, I, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm in the deep end of the pool. I get it. I get it. Um, jazz theory up to a point. And then I feel the ground start to slip. And I'm treading water. <laughs> but I, I, I get it up to a certain point. Okay. The D major scale. Some of you may be well aware that the, the formula to create any major chord is the first, third, and fifth notes from the major scale. The D, D note, the F sharp note, and the A note, right? A D major chord is made up of D, F sharp, and A. The first, third, and fifth notes of the D major scale. For those of you who might be listening, not watching, come back and, and do watch this because it's so much more logical on paper. Okay, a D suspended four chord. Every chord has a formula, a numeric formula. Instead of being one, three, five, like the major chord, a D suspended chord is one, four, five. That's a very weird looking little four there. That's a four right there. Okay. So one, four, five. So say it with me. The three notes of a D suspended four chord, not a shock. One of them is the note D, right? The fourth note of the D major scale. What's the fourth note or the fourth degree of a D major scale? G like golf, and the fifth note of a D major scale, A like alpha, okay? So every chord, every chord has a numerical formula, and you apply that formula to the major scale, and you get the chord. Even if it's a minor chord, you still use the major scale as a reference point, okay? Trust me, why would I lie? Okay, D suspended to one, two, five. Notice the one and the five don't change. You know, D and A, everywhere you look, any of these chords have D and A, the one and the five, it's the two. That is the new one here. What's the second degree of a D major scale? You know it, E echo. Okay. Now, I'm not done, I'm almost done. <laughs> okay, there you go. So, Candy, you asked a great question. Now we're getting into the the, the math that's involved. It's easy math, but it's numbers, it's abstract, it's a little bit of math, you know? Okay. Now, this is all well and good, and I know you take my word that this is accurate, and it is accurate, but one more question for you. Do you remember that I said when you play any suspended chord, there's only two of them, when you play either one of them, you are removing 
the one note that gave the major chord or minor chord its identity. So take a look there. Someone put in the chat, everybody put in the chat. It should be pretty obvious if I did my job right. The D suspended four and the D suspended two, what's the note that got removed to make them suspended? You know, what's the note? Someone put it in the chat. I've got my eyes in the chat right now. I mean, it should be pretty obvious. The D is still there. Yeah, Martian Murray. The A is still there. Yeah, right? The F sharp. And guess what? The F sharp is literally the note. It's the note that makes it a D major chord. Okay? Now, can you take a minor chord and suspend it? Oh, totally. Totally. It's a, it's the same thing. I mean, because, and I'll, I'll write it in a minute, but the same deal. We'll take the middle note of a minor chord and replace it with the second scale degree or the fourth scale degree. And then that's, you've, you've, what was minor, now it's suspended. It's the same thing though. Um, just to prove the point, someone says, well, what if the chord is D minor? And I'm going to write this. Ooh, another piece of paper. A D minor chord is, bear with me. If you guys get this, even if it takes you a minute to get this, but if you guys get this, you are smarter than you think. Because this is like, this takes a little mm, juggling. If any of you are struggling with this, don't worry, come back to it later. Don't worry, we'll talk about stuff like this in the future. Um, but if you guys like, wait, you know, that's okay, I, I can get that. If that's music theory, I can get that. Then you have the right attitude and you're doing great. Okay, a D minor chord. <laughs> I feel like I'm just a mugshot. <laughs> okay, the, remember I told you every, every chord has a numerical formula? The numerical formula for a D minor chord, one, flat three, five. Hmm, flat three, that mean, means you take whatever the three was and you move it back one half step, okay? So there's a numerical formula for a D minor chord. One, flat three, five, a D and F, not F sharp, D, F and A. How can I prove it, prove it? Remember I told you any, any music theory question always goes back to major scales, even if you're talking about a minor chord. So we go back to our major scale. Remember our formula, one, flat three, five. We apply that formula to the major scale. Well, one is D. Five is A, flat three, woo, okay, F sharp. If you flat an F sharp, here's an example of an F sharp, skinny string, second fret. To flat it means, means to move backwards one fret. So now I'm touching the first fret on the skinny string, okay? I just flatted the third degree, and that's what I need for D minor. And some of you know a D minor chord very well. You might never have thought about it before. When you play a D minor chord, you have... First finger, point of finger, first string, fourth, first fret. That's the no F. No more F sharp. F, right? Okay. So that's the definition of a D minor chord. But if you took away that F and you played a G instead or an E instead, then you would have suspended the minor chord. The net result is the same you end up with D, G, A, or D, yeah, D, G, A, or D, E, A. See, I put that G and the E in parentheses. Those are the two options of how you can suspend a chord, okay? Um, so, uh, there's, there's one more thing I was going to say. Oh, you might say, okay, well, what if, what if we take that A and, you know, I'm going to go back to the D major chord. D, F sharp, and A. What if we take away the A and substitute something else instead? That's a, a, a very profound thing. Um, in theory, in theory, you need that A. You can't, you can't mess with that one, <laughs> you know? Um, that, that triggers a whole nother thing. Um, so some of you were thinking it. I hope you were. Like, oh, wow, if we can mess with the F sharp, maybe we can mess with it. Like, what else can we do? It's like chemistry, right? I mean, not that I know anything about chemistry. My son is a chemistry major. 
Um, but it's it's chord chemistry, you know. <clears throat> Something, I mean, you can mess with anything, but the stakes get higher, so to speak. Uh, so you guys feeling okay about about a suspended two chord and a suspended four chord? If you are, awesome. If you're still a little wobbly on the theory, that's okay. Just understand that when you suspend a chord, you are changing one note, and you might be changing by simply lifting a finger off. Remember now, I was on the D, and I lifted my middle finger off, so I have the open E skinny string. That's, that, sometimes that's how you replace one note with another note. Or you might put down a finger. Very likely it's going to be the pinky because the pinky's off and not doing anything. But by putting down the pinky, that pinky eclipses, I like to say it eclipses the um, middle finger note. My pinky's on the, I'm still doing the D major chord. My pinky is now squeezing on the first string, third fret. And even though my middle finger is still squeezing on the first string, second fret, it's it's uh, irrelevant at this point because my my pinky is the note you're going to hear, right? Every once in a while, someone is surprised to, to learn this, that one a higher fret on one string makes the lower fret on that string inaudible. There it is. Tom Petty knew it. How do you write a whole song? A good song with just that. Because uh, that continues throughout Free Fallen. Okay, I got a video on Free Fallen out there somewhere. And we did Free Fallen way back in the day as one of our very first live stream guitar play alongs. Okay. Um, I see a question and I see you guys are answering questions. So yeah, um, Charlie Beagle asked, how does this whole thing differ from diminished? And Martian Murray answered the question. Um, a diminished chord is by definition, it's a minor chord. Well, let's call it a diminished triad, right? A three note diminished chord. The formula, remember I said every chord has a mathematical formula. Um, the mathematical formula for a diminished chord flatted third and flatted fifth which creates a weird sound remember I, I said it was a big deal if you mess with the fifth yeah diminished chords have a freaky sound which is why they show up in scary movies or weird dreamy sequences yep um so you guys you guys are answering your i mean amongst yourselves you're answering your own uh your own question answering each other's questions and that's a beautiful thing um, Candy is saying, oh, Candy, thank you for your super chat. I appreciate that. Does it relate to signature notes? Um, the answer is probably yes, but I don't know what you mean by signature notes. Um, if you mean this whole suspended thing, um, when you suspend a chord, are you suspending it with notes that are that are in the key signature, in the scale, in the group that you're working with? Yes, yeah, for sure. So to suspend a D major chord, I can only do it with other notes from the D major scale. Um, so yeah, so I took away the F sharp, but I took away the F sharp and I replaced it with either the open E string, literally the open E sound, or my pinky grabbed that G. It's gotta be one of those notes. Suspended chords are, are just a beautiful thing. Chords are full of emotion. Um, I mean, chords are harmony. A lot of vibrations going on in harmony, right? Multiple vibrations. Um, and and chords are, are full of emotion. I mean, I know melody, melody gets all the spotlight because we love to hum a melody, whistle a melody. You know, you you can you love a song because of the melody. You might not even know uh, all the words. Uh, the melody is so fun. The whole vibe of the song might be so fun. Um, but chords, uh, chords bring so much to the table. They really do. Okay, my friends, I think that'll do it. Let's end on that note. Why not? Why not? Uh, head, on, head on over to uh, song-bike.com. Get yourself a copy of that free blues guide. It comes with a video. Uh, I, well, the, it, it directs you to my YouTube channel where there's a video that, that illustrates everything in the Blues Guide. While you're at my website, consider becoming a member. Ten bucks a month, um, pennies per day. You can become a, a yearly member for um, less than ten bucks a month. Technically, it's a hundred bucks per year. That's where I put videos and stuff that I don't post on YouTube. Um, the website is uh, undergoing a transformation, a big up 
date as we speak. It's things are in the works. I'm very excited about that. But there's plenty of videos. There's about 100 videos on the website right now. Um, if you're so inclined to get yourself a book or an ebook when you're at the website, remember, most of the books on my website that I've written are ebooks. You immediately get sent the PDF copy of the book. There's one book that is a hard copy book, and that's this one. Right. If you order this book from my website, I personally put it in a package and mail it to you probably Monday morning. Um, and, uh, and that takes a few days to get to you. Very cool book called Easy Guitar Chord and Lead Tricks. I did not come up with that title. I also did not come up with a subtitle, which says A Guide to Elevating Your Playing from Hal Leonard Publications. I also didn't. Can I read this to you? Uh, on the back, you know, they got the blurb on the back, right? Guitarist. An acclaimed YouTuber, Jonathan Kiyu, gives you accessible tricks, tips and tricks to streamline the learning process so that you can be on your way to playing songs and lead lines with ease. But can we go back to acclaimed YouTuber? I'm acclaimed, yo. If Hal Leonard says I'm acclaimed, I'm acclaimed. I, uh, I've been known to use that phrase when I come home without the thing I was supposed to buy at the grocery store because I forgot. I said to my wife, well, the acclaimed YouTuber forgot the cat food. I'm acclaimed. I'll let you know how that works out for me. Um, hey, last thing, you guys have been subscribing to my YouTube channel. Keep it up. I appreciate it. We're getting so close to uh, 200,000 subscribers. I'll give you an update at the moment. Okay, ready? At the moment, 199,568 subscribers. 432, we got 35 of you right there. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would appreciate it uh, uh, now or when the live stream is over. YouTube tells me that around April Fool's Day, ironically, the next couple of weeks, that's probably when I'll hit 200,000. Um, happens to be around April Fool's Day. Uh, but why wait until then? You know, so if any of you are so inclined, uh, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, it, uh, it makes me feel good. I don't expect a pay bump or really anything at all from YouTube, but it just warms my heart to be at 200,000. It's going to happen sooner or later. I don't know. Why not now? Um, so I, I thank you in advance. If you are about to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you already have subscribed to the YouTube channel, I thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, it does make a difference, so thank you. All right, you guys, I'll uh, say a few good nights. Uh, good night, Winston, Deborah, Scott, Joseph, Charlie, Candy, Martian, Murray. Uh, did I say Scott? Uh, I know there's some of you who are, um, are watching but not involved in the live stream, uh, and I thank you for watching. All right, you guys, I'll see you next Saturday. Uh, different stuff, different questions from you guys. I can't wait to hear them. If you think of your questions during the week, put them in the chat. Uh, lastly, I'm going to put my email address in the chat because you guys can just email me a question. Okay. Info at song-bike.com. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, take care. Have a good uh, St. Patrick's Day tomorrow for those of you who observe. And... Um, uh, I'm looking forward to next week already. Okay, folks, see you next time. Be well, play your guitars. See you next time.